Tableau 3, Part 2, Earn Models in Statistical Physics. The casual listener might find this a strange juxtaposition. Commonplace problems on the one hand, and the strange world of statistical physics on the other. But of course, in the 21st century, we have come to casual familiarity with strange objects, denizens from the world of physics, which appear in the popular literature in the popular press. Now, in the previous tableau, we concluded with a view of how simple ball and urn models appear in commonplace problems involving the throwing of a die or the repeated toss of a coin. In today's lecture, we shall see how small variants on this urn theme apply to very fundamental and deep problems in physics. This is a dangerous bend lecture, and the reader who is anxious to get on with the rest geste, to the main course as it were, could skip this tableau and move on to the next part without any loss of continuity. But for the reader who is curious about modern day physics and the role chance plays in it, listen on. There are few places in modern life where we see such large assemblages of particles as in particle physics. In the 19th century, physics was viewed very mechanistically. There were determined laws which had been given to us by Newton and physical systems invariably followed those laws. But late in the 19th century, with a growing evidence for particulate behavior, there was a, a stream of thought which created a statistical or a probabilistic understanding of how physical particles behaved. The spearhead for these kind of ideas was Ludwig Boltzmann, who around the end of the 19th century postulated a theory of statistical mechanics. This was not widely accepted. but this was the beginnings of a theory which informed much of 20th century physics. Now, in this world, we find that there are particles, a large number of them, milling around without a priori determined outcomes. How does one describe such a world? What is an appropriate model? Of course, today, the listener would have encountered strange and exotic particles of all kinds, perhaps mesons, gluons, the weak and the strong nuclear forces, photons, the Higgs boson. Now, these particles appear in very strange forms, in exotic colors, for example, the fundamental quarks, which appear in many flavors, up and down, strange, charm, all these lend color to a rather complicated story. But of course, if one looks at this in full generality, as it were, it becomes extraordinarily hard to model. Now, remarkably, at the heart of all of these apparently complex and diverse kinds of particular behavior are very, very, very simple chance models involving variations on a theme on balls and urns. So let us get to the heart of the problem and describe, shorn of all physical color, what the essential mathematical problem is. So, we begin with an assemblage, and in your mind you should think of a very large assemblage of a large number of particles. Inevitably, we call them n in number. These particles come equipped with certain characteristics what are called the states of the particles. For example, where they are located, their physical positioning, perhaps their momentum, their spin. These characteristics describe the state of the particle. For definiteness, think about this as, let's say, a physical position, though it could be more complex than that. One of the great discoveries in early 20th century physics was that these fundamental attributes of particles were quantized. They were discretized, a finite in number. 
which meant that particles occupied only a finite number of states. And inevitably, in our context, we think of those states as urns, receptacles that particles could land in. And so now we have the beginnings of an unfolding picture. A large number of particles in, and a set of urns, states, to which they could belong, they could be assigned. And now we have a ball and urn problem. Now, what is chance driven here? And this was Boltzmann's insight. Perhaps the best way to think about assemblages of particles like these is to imagine that they are distributed in the states, in the urns, at random. We have the beginnings of a chance driven phenomenon. The moment you distribute particles, balls in these ends, now what is material, what is salient, is which urns are occupied and how many balls are in those urns, how many of those particles share a particular characteristic. This leads to the idea of an occupancy number. So, the way we're going to think about this is as follows. Imagine that we list the urns from left to right 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, up through R. These are the possible states of your physical system. Distribute the balls in these ends by some random mechanism. And then simply count how many balls are in the first urn. Well, we need to give this a name, a number. This is the essential purpose of notation. Let's call them K1 balls in the first urn. And then there are a certain number of balls in the second urn. How many? Well, inevitably, K2 a number k3 in the third urn, and say k sub r in the other urn. These numbers k represent the occupancy of these ants. Of course, occupancy numbers must be non-negative. You clearly can't have a negative occupancy in an urn, And they must add up to the total number of balls in the system, the total number of particles. Good. Now, here is the million dollar question. You've got a chance distribution of these balls. An occupancy configuration is a sequence of R occupancies, the occupancies of each of these ends. An occupancy configuration could be realized by many different assignments of balls to ends. For example, if the first turn has got two balls, it could have the third and the seventh ball, or the millionth and the billionth balls. As far as the occupancy is concerned, it does not matter which. And so an occupancy configuration is an aggregate of possible outcomes. It is an event, a chance event in this chance-driven problem. And the moment we have a chance event, a natural question, the inevitable question is, what are the chances? So given a random placement of n balls, n particles, into r urns, are states, and given a particular occupancy configuration of interest to us, say a particular sequence k1, k2, k3 through k sub r, what are the chances, what is the probability, p of k1 through kr, that you observe that particular occupancy configuration? This particular problem is at the heart of statistical physics. We shall approach this from a historical context in three slivers. We shall start with a classical description or model, and then work out what we have to do to modify it to fit the facts. And that will lead us to the two modern versions of this occupancy problem.